This morning, we pay homage to a great statesman, a visionary leader, a nation builder. Ladies and gentlemen, on this is 109th birthday, I salute Sir Donald Burns Sangster. Today, we celebrate the life of a Jamaican trailblazer whose work and legacy gives us reason to appreciate the importance of having vision. Sir Donald Sangster is often remembered for being Jamaica's shortest serving prime minister, but in so doing, his monumental contribution in laying the foundation of modern Jamaica and the modern Jamaican economy is oftentimes overlooked. During his stint as finance minister, 1953 to 1955, and then 1962 to 67, he undertook transformational work on the country's economy as Jamaica engaged in deep conversations with the British monarchy on the most important issue of the time then, self-governance. One of the great points of those discussions was the country's ability to manage its economy and create a society that was beneficial to all. As a key member of the delegation, his input was found to be most valuable as he operated from a base of sound research and pragmatism. He represented the young, bright generation of Jamaicans who were destined to lead us into independence. Sir Donald Sangster was one of the framers of the Jamaican Constitution, serving on the Joint Independence Constitution Committee, which developed the most fundamental legal document in the country, guaranteeing the freedom, rights, and privileges of every Jamaican citizen. Today, I wish to announce that through the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport, Sir Donald Sangster's family home just outside of Mountainside in St. Elizabeth will be restored as a national heritage site. And I think today, as we recognize the work of Sir Donald Sangster, we pay our respect to him because he was one of the foundation architects of the Jamaican economy. He was a man who was just right for his time. And when you examine his achievements in what was a stellar political career, though cut short, you see that his life was characterized by commitment and service. He served the World Bank and the IMF between 1963 and 1966. As Minister of Finance, he led numerous Jamaican delegations to high-profile meetings and conferences across the world. Those experiences helped him to develop a modular financial system that was copied or adopted by many other countries that were embarking on their own independence journey. He would have been proud today to see the fruits of his labor, as despite some challenges, the Jamaican economy is quite stable and heading in the right direction.